Alright, welcome back to uh, my second video in this Thriller for series. For this video, I'm going to show how I did this really cool project in Adobe um, using Dimension. I created uh, these cool little uh, holiday bot characters and brought them into uh, Dimension to do some uh, 3D rendering and compositing over background. So, uh, you can actually go check out the uh, blog post that I put up on the Adobe um, website, Creative Cloud site here in this link. I'll have a link to it below as well. But this is basically, uh, you can actually download the assets that I created and follow along. But I thought I'd put together a cool little video here to show the speed of Three River and how it helped me create this project. So the first thing I did was go into Maya and generate these characters. So here's a little gift bo box. He's all rigged up, so I posed him here in Maya. Pieces here and move them around. He's all ready to go. And I've set up the UV so that they will um, have nice uh, patterns for putting uh, gift wrapping on. And everything here is laid out so that if I want to do any future um, materials and say some painter, I can do that as well. All these different pieces. Uh, one of the cool things about Dimension is that it will accept a model that was done and Substance Painter and export all those uh, material setup. So for this uh, project, the ornament bot here was created with that in mind. So here is his uh, UV layouts. And then this model, these both were exported as um, OBJ files for Dimension. This one I created as an FDX file to um, import into Substance, which we're going to now. So. Here's the already pre-painted guy that I had done, but I'll show you a couple little tips on how I did this. Um, if I go ahead here into the uh, ornament layer, and we can toggle off our materials, and you'll see here that when you bring it in, it's just basically has a default material, and you bake the maps here inside substance. Um, and then I can go through and add some uh, smart materials. So for instance, I did this one here with this uh, steel medial style and went in here and changed the color of the, of the ornament. You can, you can kind of go in and affect all your layers this way um, really easily. And then for the uh, the ornament, this uh, little frosted detail here, I'll show how I did that. So just call, um, call up a new layer and I'm going to use one of these grunge brushes. I think I use this rice brush. And I'm going to paint in the height channel. So the cool thing about this is, I go to this layer, turn it on, and I start painting, and you'll see that I'm generating a normal map on that layer. And I can actually go here and I head it to zero, you'll see that it doesn't create any, any bump. But I can actually take the uh, uniform height up, and as I do that, I can start painting the design. So I kind of went through here and you know, created these cool little icing bicycle effects throughout really quickly. Uh, once that was done, we then get to go over here to our export textures and one of the little tricks here was uh, you want to make sure you select, the, for this case, Adobe Dimension because the nice about this configuration is it will spit out all these textures, all the channels, and it will create an MDL file not an MTL, but an MDL file that would then get uh, automatically loaded into Dimension. So these are exported really fast on the Threadripper. Um, I did this all at 2K, and they exported out in like just a couple minutes. So let's now go over to Dimension, and we're gonna put this little thing together. So let's start this from scratch. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna use a background plane. So I found this one on my uh, Adobe stock uh, selection here. This is the one I ended up using. So what happens is you drag an image in. What's going to do its best to uh, match the environment light, sunlight, and the camera perspective. So hit OK, and it's going to go ahead and do some calculations. Now the thing is, it did the best that it could. I think it's got the perspective right, but it doesn't have the placement right. So what you can simply do is go in here and rotate your camera a little bit, move it down, and I can already tell I can eyeball it into place. And checking out the, the grid marks, its perspective looks pretty, pretty cool. Um, now we'll go into our model, so I'll go to 3D model, and I'm actually going to load these up for my uh, my Creative Cloud account here. I have all the final assets here. So the gift box is going to come in. These this model just had its default Maya 
uh, material set to it. So go into the heart to the upper hierarchy here, and you have to get used to using the uh, the 2D commands for um, your uh, manipulation here. Let me go ahead and uh, pop this over. Actually, what I need to do is just rotate my camera a little bit because I can't see the other axis. There we go. So I'm going to grab it for a little bit. I should have mentioned I could save a camera bookmark for that. So. Um, one thing about Dimension is it doesn't um, doesn't have Maya style, Maya style navigation, which I wish it would. Um, and their translate rotation and uh, scaling t uh, keys are set for Photoshop people. So, what I would say is, you know, this is kind of a fun program to use if you can't afford something like, uh, say, Keyshot. You can, um, if you have a Creative Cloud account, you can use this and get some pretty comparable results. But you kind of have to kind of understand that it's coming from, they're really hitting more of a 2D crowd with this software package. So, kind of keep that in mind. Um, next, let's go over here and we're going to import our ornament bot. And this guy's got all the maps set up, so I'm just grab this. And as it comes in, you'll see that everything is set up, which is awesome. So just go over here, get this guy over here, we'll rotate and scale him up as well. Okay, so we got some of this. We'll position him. I keep on hitting the W key, I have to remember I have to hit the V key. All right, so let's do a default preview render here. So this is using V-Ray under the hood. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I've never been a V-Ray user, so uh, I just kind of go with go with what they have here. You can't actually access any of the settings under the hood, so you have to kind of use what, what they present with you. Um, that being said, you get some pretty decent results. So right here, uh, this is a preview render. I can jump back out of this and let's start assigning some materials to the to this guy. So for instance, um, let's go through here and I'm just gonna add some uh, like grunge, kind of a damaged metallic texture you can add here. And we'll do this little brush material for the, the hips here. One of the nice things about this, this uh, you can actually, this is actually outputted as uh, combined geometry, but for instance, if I wanted to assign this material, which is part of this whole hierarchy here, I can actually use the magic wand tool and change the uh, the tolerance and select just that piece. Let me go to a small, so I get just that piece. And then using the magic wand tool, if I select on uh, this, I just assign that material to that piece. So it's kind of a cool little trick there. Um, and then let's go over to, say, the ribbon on this box. And we'll expand this and go to the ribbon properties. And these are all preset defaults that I had set up in, in Maya. So for instance, if I just wanted to start, start tweaking this, I can actually add some metallic to this. You see kind of it updates there in the, in the interface to rough this down, give a little bit of uh, reflection. Um, one also really cool thing I enjoy about this is I can go in here and select hierarchies and do some uh, post positioning if I need to. So for instance, I can take the ribbon, I can take the box, and we'll take also the waist here. Actually, let's not do that, let's take those two. And I can go Control G, group those up, and now when I go into my rotation, I can actually rotate that geometry, which is pretty cool. So if I need to kind of reposition the object post uh, 3D setup in a different package, I can do that pretty easily here, which is really cool. So I kind of look, kind of like reposition this a little bit. And yeah, I can go back here. Let's go back and check out the view render here. It kicks in, you can see now there's some materials that are assigned to it. Um, I'm not seeing any uh, crazy shadows right now because I need to adjust my sunlight. So what we'll do is go to the environment tab, click on the sunlight, and let's take that intensity up a little bit. So as I crank the intensity, you'll see it kind of kicks in here. And we can take the height of, the, of our light a little bit lower to cast more of a shadow. There we go. And maybe I want to take the rotation so the light's going to the other direction. So we'll 
see that, kind of like that chatting going off to the to camera right. So yeah, you get you get some interactive uh, preview here with the lighting, which is kind of fun. Uh, let's get back out of that mode for a second here. One thing also is fun to do is uh, for the box. Um, let's go ahead and add a texture. So we'll go to the box, and you'll see it has this uh, red texture set up here. If I click on this and go to image, I can drag and drop a file. So what I'm going to do is over here in my library, I create these in. Um, Photoshop, I'm going to grab one of these and use it as a texture map. And once that's applied, I can now go in and take my repeats down. Let's say it's like, I'll do like say four or five and take the rotation. My uh, settings are really sensitive right now. I just use the mouse. Yeah, there we go. So I can go through here and adjust this, we can take up our repeats, and change the offset to which is pretty cool. So this is all thanks to those uh, meticulously laid out UVs that I did prior to the Maya. So that's looking pretty cool. Let's um, let's uh, go in and do a quick uh, test render here. So we go to render now. And you have a couple options here. Uh, again, there's no, you don't have any other settings other than low, medium, and fast. So we'll hit, we'll hit low for now, and then we're just going to do this default to the desktop. Hit render. It's going to do a little bit of the thinking here, and it kicks in, and there's our render. And I usually find for doing um, these test renders, the low setting is, is it goes pretty fast. And I can get something pretty nicely workable here. Um, and then when it's time to do the high-res render, I'll kick off a mini or high-res render. And there you go, 100% done there. That was like less than a minute. All right, so it's been saved. Let's uh, go back here. One uh, last thing I wanted to add in is um, some decals. So one of the cool things is you can actually drag a transparent decal on top of something that's already got a uh, texture map on it. So let's add some logos to this box. So we'll take the dimension over here and I'll just drag and drop it right onto the geometry itself. And you see here it maps it on and it's conforming to that, to that surface, which is pretty cool. And I can take this widget, hold on the shift key to constrain it, and rotate and move into position. So it's over here, make it a little bit smaller. And let's also add a texture to the ribbon. So I've got this Adobe uh, logo here, and I'll drag it onto the ribbon. And I want to put it over in here. So it drops in. I know it's there. So if I just click this and move it into position, I can see where it's at. And then we'll scale it down as well. And position that. And, put the rotation. and there's our texture there. And that will stay with it if I need to reposition it. Um, it it's all up to the material. Um, I'm going to go back and test that out again or just go into the preview and see how much the preview render should kick in. There we go. And we've got our update. So right there, you know, in a matter of minutes, I'm able to, you know, bring in some characters, bring in some geometry, uh, match up to a backplate, do a quick render and save it out as a Photoshop file. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is now we're going to go into Photoshop and I'll show you some of the cool things that uh, spit out. So you get these um, these layers. So let's turn off this. Let me turn off this snow layer for a second. I'll show you how I built this up. Um, one of the nice things is you get these additional, additional layers. Uh, the one I like to use here is this material selection mask. So for instance, let's use our magic wand. I'll pick, say, I have to go to the layer. We'll pick the. Um, there we go. We'll pick this material and turn that off. Let's say we're going to add a new. Um, I want to go to this layer and add a adjustment adjustment layer to it. So I want to uh, I want to control the hue saturation. So with that selected, I can now go in here and using just that selection, I can go through and change non-destructively the color on that layer for the ribbon. So let's say we want to do something like that, just something to show contrast. You can toggle that on and off. And let's go back over here and maybe see we want to adjust the lighting or the material color on that um, ornament. Go back to our main image here and let's do another new saturation on that. And maybe we'll do like a colorize and I can adjust the color of that ornament. 
so that's pretty cool. And then after that, I kind of just went through and added some snow layers. I kind of hand painted some stuff and uh, edited uh, a few different um, compositing maps to get some cool looks for that. And then I added the, the final text, which had some drops and some drop shadows and stuff like that. So there you go. So that's uh, that's a little walkthrough on how I use the Threadripper to quickly generate a cool 3D scene using um, Maya Substance Painter and Adobe Dimension. Um, definitely check out the blog and read along. You can actually download these assets. I've got them up uh, on the link here. And you can follow along and um, give it a try. If you have an a Adobe Creative Cloud account, it's free to download all these apps. Check it out and uh, maximize your, uh, your Creative Cloud uh, membership. All right, thanks for watching.